Welcome. Colonel Jarvis and I are here today to talk about the civil engineer presence at Headquarters Air Force and the major commands. As you know, 1 October brought two major changes to the civil engineer community. One of these changes was the Headquarters Air Force reorganization. The Deputy Chief of Staff for Logistics, Installations, and Mission Support changed from Air Force A-47 to Air Force A-4. Aligning civil engineers and logistics under the same office symbol allowed the half to align to the Joint Staff organizational construct. It also helped us address the call to reduce overhead, gain greater efficiencies, and eliminate lower priority activities. The second change was the realignment of the number of field operating agencies and direct reporting units to the Provisional Air Force Installation and Mission Support Center. Of course, these changes represent more than just a new office symbol or reporting structure. They also mean a change in the way we do business. At the headquarters, our focus at the Directorate of Civil Engineers will dramatically shift to strategy development, policy and guidance, oversight, engaging with our partners in the Pentagon and on the Hill, career field management, and resource advocacy. In turn, this role adjustment here impacts the roles and responsibilities of the major commands. Hello, engineers. I'm Colonel Scott Jarvis and serve as the Deputy Director Installation and Mission Support at Headquarters Air Force Base Command. On behalf of all my fellow MAGCOM engineers, it is my honor to speak with you today about the impacts IMSC will have on our MAGCOMs. As Brigadier General Green described, this reorganization is driving a shift in focus for not only the half staff, but also for MAGCOM civil engineers. We have a significant challenge this fiscal year as we continue to provide intermediate level headquarters support to our installations while preparing to transition workload to the new installation and mission support center. Each MAGCOM will have to juggle outplacement of surplus employees while still retaining enough engineers to provide adequate support to our wings. To our credit, we engineers have been a resilient force and one that tackles challenges head on. Although this upcoming reorganization is indeed a dramatic change in our culture and the way we have operated in the past, we need to view this as an opportunity to get even better and do all we can to ensure that one, IMSC is able, capable, and ready to support our installations. Two, the MAGCOM staffs have the engineering support and advice they need. And three, we take care of our engineer airmen through this transition. With any transition, there is always risk. We will look to leverage our remaining MAGCOM staffs to mitigate risk to airmen and risk to mission. Our staffs have already begun to get smaller, and we will need to prioritize our capabilities in order to mitigate that risk. Flexibility will be key as we move forward, as we may need to shift resources and manpower to meet the needs of our installations, while at the same time, the MAGCOM staffs continue to get smaller. In short, it will take the concerted effort of all MAGCOMs, the HAF and AFKEC, to ensure we meet the needs of warfighters and installation commanders. In the immediate future, your work at the MAGCOMs should not change as a result of these restructuring efforts, but personnel changes are already in motion. Eventually, programming and budgeting, program management, and execution functions will transition from the headquarters level to the Air Force Installation and Mission Support Center. But as I have said before, these changes will not affect CE capabilities delivered at base level. The stand-up of IMSC will have a profound impact on the MAGCOMs in a variety of ways. As many of you know, the MAGCOM CE staffs will significantly reduce in size and focus remaining capabilities on requirements validation and prioritization, operational planning, and direct support to the MAGCOM commander. This smaller staff will see their duties change from providing direct support for the field to support for the mission. Functional expertise, resource management, and program management will be centralized at the IMSC. For instance, mechanical, electrical, pavements, installation planning, and NEPA will no longer reside on the MAGCOM staff. Staffs retained by the MAGCOMs will coordinate programs and integrated priority lists to ensure correct and consistent mission impact and relevance to priorities. In addition to the smaller MAGCOM CE staff, there will be an engineering presence in the local IMSC detachment at each MAGCOM. The engineers assigned to the IMSC detachments will be the forward-based presence available to support MAGCOM A staffs and MAGCOM installations with space optimization and management, 
basing, and bed down support, as well as emergency management. As you can imagine, there are many great engineers working hard to ensure we get this right. We're not there yet, and we have many details to still work out, but we are certainly on the way, and we need your help. Remain flexible, stay positive, and help us become even better at what we do. I'm confident that together we can rise to this challenge. At this time, the Air Force IMSC team is working diligently and deliberately through Business Process Reengineering, or BPR. As the Air Force alters our organizations, we simply cannot move from having 10 people performing a process across our major commands to some smaller number and expect the same outcome, whether those personnel are located at the IMSC headquarters or the MAGCOM staff, a detachment, at the half, it, it doesn't matter. This makes it essential for us to re-engineer our processes starting from the inputs received from installations through the output that results in decisions and actions. This process of matching mission capability requirements to available resources takes time, which is prolonging uncertainty about what comes next for us. Additionally, given the end strength level we've been given for both the Air Force IMSC headquarters and its detachments, the team will not be aiming for a perfect solution at the outset. Rather, a solution that allows us to assess how to fit the capabilities transferred from the MAGCOMS to the Air Force IMSC. I can't overstate the enormity and complexity of this task, and I'm confident the first solution won't be our final answer as we work to test and evaluate this very new way for our Air Force to deliver installation and mission support. As Air Force engineers, we provide a critical component to ensuring our installations remain the best power projection platforms on the face of the earth. Our airmen in the field depend on a successful transition, and our nation demands it of us. Thank you for your time. What you're seeing today is just the next step in this transformation effort that started seven years ago. We need to continue to look for better, faster, and cheaper ways to deliver the capabilities our Air Force needs if we're going to stay ahead of the ever-increasing rate of change that influences our operating environment. As we watch some corporations survive and thrive, while others lose relevance and die in today's changing environment, we must recognize that we face similar challenges. To echo what the Chief of Staff stated in the Air Force strategic vision, we must become the Air Force we need to be, not the Air Force we used to be. That means continually building strategic agility in our day-to-day -day operations in order to remain relevant and effective. It's important now more than ever to adapt to this ever-changing geopolitical climate with professionalism and optimism. Our chief also said there's going to be a fine balance between doing this quickly and doing no harm. That means we need to continue focusing on what really matters, and that's ensuring that our installations continue to have the resources and guidance necessary to support Air Force missions. We endeavor to preserve the capabilities of our installations, and we need your help to ensure we get this right. We will continue to produce these short videos to help our entire force stay abreast of the changes in play. As always, I expect your senior leaders to share updates with you as changes are finalized that directly affect your organization. Thank you for what you do each and every day for our Air Force and our nation.